literally, I actually had a term sheet, right, yeah. from Alan. And I was like, you can come and we can co-found this and you be the CEO, be the front face, you know, I'll be the chairman, I'll be behind the scenes, I'll raise the capital, I'll do the business partnerships, I'll do all that. But you take the playbook that you had advice and you just execute it here, right? And so that's what happened. So I ended up uh, putting together the plan with Sean. Alan wrote the first check. I called up Steve Chen, actually emailed Steve Chen, uh, co-founder of YouTube, and he wrote the second check. Uh, he didn't even, he just literally looked at the plan. It was two emails and he's like, I was like, you need to get on a call. He's like, no, 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 I'll just. <laughs> <laughs> like just super, super, super Batman style, right? And then, and then, um, and then I was introduced to Spark Lab. Well, I knew Spark Labs out of Seoul, Korea, like yeah. the Y Combinator as Seoul and so Bernard Moon, he was the yeah. third check. And then he introduced me to GDP, uh, which is Martin Hartono, uh, uh, the biggest digital media group out of Indonesia. And then my uncle's uh, very good friend, Francis Learn, um, who was a former chairman of, 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 of CVC Capital and and uh, and and uh, uh, one of the biggest buyout platforms on the planet, and Lee Koshing's banker, Francis Learn. And so basically, I wanted strategic investors in our Series A. So we raised 2.5 million. And I wanted Silicon Valley, which was Steve, Silicon Beach, which was Alan Debevoir. I wanted Greater China, which was Francis Learn slash Lee Kashing. And then I wanted South Korea, obviously, and Southeast Asia. So I wanted strategically to have resources from our first round to represent all of Asia, not just Asian America, but a celebration of Asian culture from Asia to the rest of the world. And so, you know, it just, and then it happened again. It just like providence or luck, right? And next thing you know, dumbfounded, you know, we all know dumbfounded, um, uh, the greatest rapper from K-Town ever uh, sends, you know, Sean uh, a link, right, to this Korean trap rapper named Keith A. And, yeah. and, and he's like, yo, and Sean's playing it for me. He's like, yo, this is the hardest shit I've ever heard. And it's Ichima from Keith A. And it was like completely antithetical to K-pop. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, like it was grimy, it was ghetto, it was shot for probably a hundred dollars on an iPhone. You know, and you got these dope ass Korean and Japanese r rappers spitting fire on this trap track, right? And it's just so hard. And we're just like, yo, this is the hardest Asian rap we've ever heard in our lives, right? So we sign them, um, and and then we do the remix, right? And 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 you know, uh, Shauna then put on Waka Flocka, ASAP Ferg, Father, dumbfounded on the track. We drop it on complex and it's like the first thing that hits right and it just next thing you know we're in new york la and it's like crowd surf crowd surfing to ichima white kids and black kids chanting in korean it was just the craziest thing and it was like this whole movement and then it was like months later i remember i was in new york and i, I was in the office with sean and dumbfound had then sent us the first video link to rich chiga or rich brian yeah. now that stick and so up until that point, we knew of Rich because he was popular on Vine. Like he was just like this little meme, you know, comedian. Um, but then he makes this that stick track and it's going viral on YouTube and Facebook. And we're listening to it. I'm like, yo, this is, is this a joke? Is this Asian <laughs> Slim Jesus, right? And and then Sean's just like, no, no, no. Listen to him spit though. Look at this, this voice is so deep. And he's just like, it's like, yo, this kick, he's, he's got talent. And so, the idea was let's do the same thing we did with Keith with Rich. So reach out to Rich. And of course, um, you know, 88, you know, we had this genius franchise called Rappers React, where, you know, at South by Southwest, we paid all these young up and coming rappers who are now the biggest rappers now, but back then they were just starting. This is 2000, like 15, 16. So it was like 21 Savage, Lil Yachty, Denzel Curry, Migos, like, and they all reacted to the that stick video right yeah. and we caught there you remember that video it's, it's yeah. still the funniest i still think it's the funniest reaction video in history i still watch it a thousand times and never stop laughing but ghostface killers on it cameron's on it and of course at the end of the video it, it gets picked up by cnn and next thing you know ghostface is like yo i'll get on the remix and we couldn't believe yeah. our ears like for real and then sean's like no he's for real and i was like are we really gonna do this and so we literally put it together shoot the remix video in tokyo First time Rich travels out the country and then, you know, green screen ghost face in and we do the Dat Stick remix, drop it on YouTube. And I think that was like one of our first few official 88 Rising videos and it broke the internet. It just becomes number one trending video on YouTube, breaks the internet, people are freaking out and 
you know, that's when from there, there was just no turning back. And then we found the higher brothers in Chengdu through, you know, our, 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 our in-house project manager, Allison, she was a DJ. She found, uh, you know, higher brothers on, on YouTube. There were like less than a thousand views. And I was like, yo, this is yeah. the hardest Chinese rap I've ever heard. And of course, Filthy Frank, you know, Joji then switches over and becomes Joji and then everything just happens. And then it became what it became.